I've got the Anastasia Beverly Hills self-made eyeshadow palette to share with you guys today and I did do a demo which is the look that's on my eyes right now so if you're interested in that it'll be towards the end of the video but I can actually review this palette because I've used every shade in the palette. I've used it four times now since I've gotten it. The palette itself is like a coated cardboard. It's really, it's one of the nicest packaged palettes from Anastasia that I have had so far. It's it's quite nice and sleek and very travel friendly. And then when you open up the palette, there is a mirror. It doesn't prop itself up, so you'd have to hold it if you were to use it. And inside this particular palette, there are 14 shades as opposed to 12, which are in all of the rest of the palettes that I have from her. And each shadow in here is 0.025 ounce is a piece which is on the smaller spectrum as far as um eyeshadow size in palettes is concerned but it's still a, it's a decent amount of product in the palette and then it does come with the double ended brush which has a blender on one side and then kind of a flat shader on the other and it does say Anastasia Beverly Hills on there Talking a little bit about the eyeshadows in here, I feel like they're on par with some of her other palettes, the formulation of them. And sometimes with her eyeshadows, they can be a little bit messy, a little bit drier feeling, a little dusty, they can have a little fallout or whatever, but what I always find about the palettes that I use from her is they always build and blend and have pigmentation when I use them on the eyes. And one of her other palettes, I didn't get around to doing a video on the World Traveler palette, which I'll compare palettes in a minute. When I got that palette, I just continually gravitated towards it and used it and used it and used it because it was quick, it was easy, it was no fuss because it, they blended so well. And this is the same type of ordeal. I had a little tiny bit of fallout, um, nothing major at all out of this particular palette. And it does get a little messy inside of here, but they really, really perform on the eyes. Um, some really intensely pigmented colors in here as well. The shade Spirit Rock does have chunky glitter in it. And then when I used sh pink champagne today, which I didn't notice when I used it the first day packed on the lid, but today I used it just a tiny bit on this inner corner and I got real up close to the mirror to even be able to see it. But there is a little bit of shiny sparkles that didn't quite brush off my face when I was trying to brush it off. So they stuck a little bit, but this particular shade is absolutely beautiful. It's like highly metallic. One thing that I found each time that I use this was I was looking for um, like a matte transition shade. I didn't really think that there was a good transition shade in the palette. There are only two mattes which are buttery and hot chocolate. So what I was using, what I use today is the shade Sherbert. Um, hot and cold could be used that way too but both of those Sherbert more so than hot and cold is more of a satin. It does have a bit of a shine through it and hot and cold is even shinier than Sherbert. So I do wish there was a matte transition shade in this palette. Um, so you have to kind of bring something in for that or either try to blend these two together to create that transition shade. So that is something to keep in mind. But as far as the performance of these on the eyes, I really do like them. I really re couldn't believe how much I had used the uh, World Traveler palette when I got it. I thought it, I'd used it a couple times, but I had really gravitated towards using it a whole bunch. Um, repetitive shades in here. Pink Champagne is also in the World Traveler palette. And then Buttery is in the Artist palette. And I'm going to compare those two palettes with this one as well. So let's go ahead and get into some swatches. So here is your palette up close. Right there. And then here's your mirror. And here are the shadows. So you've got Pink Champagne, Metallic Plum, Self Made, Witchy, Blush, Blossom, Buttery, Deep Purple, Treasure, Hot and Cold, Sherbert, Isla or Isla, Spirit Rock, and Hot Chocolate. Again, the only two mattes in here are Buttery and Hot Chocolate. I'll go ahead and start swatching them by two, starting with these two matte ones. The Spirit Rock shade for me, especially since I'll, I blended it, um, the purple micro glitters that are in there didn't really adhere, but if you were to pack that over a black sticky base, I'm sure they would pop. But for me, I, it's just kind of a matte black. Having said that, I guess I could consider that a matte for me, but it does have those purple uh, micro glitters in it. So these next two, this is a, a kind of a unique shade. It looks like a gray pewter, but it's got a little bit of a pinky purple shift to it.
and then these next two. I did find this shade and this shade to be the chunkiest, but they're also the most metallic. They're really, really gorgeous uh, shades, but they are chunkier than the rest. These next two. And then the very last two, this deep purple shade, I used it yesterday. I mean, you just barely dab your brush in there. This shade is crazy, crazy intense purple. Like crazy. Aren't those, both these shades are just beautiful. Look at that pink champagne. So pretty. I actually think that was one of the shades that I purchased as a single when she released it. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I have pink champagne in the single, but aren't those beautiful? So on the top you've got the World Traveler palette and then on the bottom is the Self Made palette and this is, these are the two that have the same shade which is Pink Champagne. Everything else uh, is a different shade. And then I did notice when I grabbed the other two palettes here that the brushes in them are all the same. And here on top you've got the Artist palette and then on the bottom is the Self Made palette. And th these ones have the same shade Buttery. Other than finding myself looking for that matte transition type of color, I really like this palette. I have really good luck with Anastasia's eyeshadow formula, so I think she's a good one. Um, now, if you're interested in seeing the look that's on my eyes and these eyeshadows performing, you can hang tight and we'll get into it right now. On a Wayne Goss number 18 brush, I'm going to go into the shade Self Made. And I'm going to pack that on the center of the lid to start out with at least. Using the side of that same brush, I'm going to pick up just a bit of pink champagne and put this on the inner portion. Using a Chica Holder GSN 9, I'm going to go into Hot Chocolate, which is right there. It's one of the, one of two mattes in the palette. I'm going to start out here. Using a Goss 19, I'm going to go into Sherbert and blend out that hot chocolate shade a bit. On a Goss number 3 brush, I'm going to use Buttery underneath the brow, which is one of the other mattes in the palette. I'm also going to give this a blend right here. And there's the eyeshadow done. Very fall harvest is how it turned out, I guess. I have a tiny bit of fallout, like very, very minimal out of all of those shadows. So I'm just going to wipe that off. I had to get up real close to the mirror to be able to see it. But um, now I'm going to go ahead and finish up my eye makeup and I'll be right back to put on some lips for you guys. For lips, I've got Clinique Quick Liner for lips in the shade 10 Baby Buff. So I'm just going to line my lips with this guy. And then to fill them in, I've got one of Estee Lauder's Pure Color Envy lipsticks, and this is in 110 Insatiable Ivory. So 
So there's the overall finished look using the Anastasia Beverly or Anastasia Beverly Hills self-made eyeshadow palette. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I'll see you guys later. Bye.